So during the time that I was away, a new version of Moto came out, and I figured that's a good excuse to make another tips and tricks video. You know, there's some new stuff that I've learned along the way, and there's there's questions that I've picked up from people who are trying to learn Moto. So yeah, let's dive in and maybe learn something. And just to address this real quick, uh, the reason I was gone was, well, it was twofold. Uh, one was that I needed to take a break. You know, sometimes these videos get a little time demanding, and so uh, work had to take precedence. Secondly, uh, my hard drive took a hard, uh, took a hard face plant, and I, well, well, logically I should have just replaced the hard drive, but I chose to upgrade the computer instead, so that ate a little bit of time. Uh, but now we're back up and running. Um, the one thing I didn't have backed up was my OBS settings, but I downloaded the newest version of OBS and I've tried to reconstruct the place that so it looks more or less like it did before. And uh, yeah, let's roll forward. So one of the core concepts in Modo is that tools will only operate on what you have selected. Uh, with the flip side rule, that if you have nothing selected, that counts as having everything selected. And what that basically boils down to is that if you have a mesh and you activate a tool like the add loop tool, it's going to affect the entire mesh by default. But if you select a subset of polygons, it's only going to um, affect those polygons. That's super handy when you're cleaning up a mesh or trying to fix topology. Just there's lots of cases where that comes in handy, trust me. So for a quick demonstration, um, let's say I wanted to add an, you know, add an edge loop to this little hole cut out. By default, it's hitting every polygon that it can reach, right? Uh, which is what you want. Yeah, but in this case, I'm like, well, I only want to put it on these polygons. Uh, so I activate the add loop tool and put it in here and you can see it's only affecting the ones I have selected. And that's that. So one of the complaints I hear from people when they're learning Modo is that you know, it takes a lot of clicks to get things done. And that's that's solvable in different ways, and we'll talk about that you know, in the future. But uh, the one I wanted to address right now is the tools. Tools, uh, by default, require you to click to activate them. So for example, let me select these polygons and turn on the bevel tool. Well, you can see over on the left-hand side here that the bevel tool is active because the properties are up but there's no widgets in the viewport. You have to click once, oh, and then the widgets appear, which causes all kinds of problems because you click and you scoot the mouse a little bit, you know, and now you've activated the tool and moved things slightly. It's just a pain in the butt. So the way to fix that behavior is to activate the bevel tool, and you'll have to find the list tab uh, on your UI. Uh, my layout is obviously not standard, but you'll find it. It's right there. I'm going to the tool pipe, right click the bevel tool and this auto activate menu option turn that on and drop the tool now every time I activate the bevel tool the widgets are there because it just uh, right off the bat activates uh, without requiring that annoying little click so uh, that should speed you up some so back when I was programming you know, all those years ago. Uh, the text editors that I would use had a handy facility for like uh, recording a quick macro of keystrokes and just playing it back over and over and over again. And that's really handy for reformatting blocks of text and that kind of stuff. And you can do the same thing inside of Modo. Uh, you just have to leverage the macro system. Uh, so the whole point behind the macro system is the reduction of work. And uh, just to set this up, let me say that I want to record the sequence of actions that I want to perform on each hole, right? So I pick an edge uh, and that's my starting point for the macro. So at this point I go to system and I say record macro. Now Moto is listening in the background to anything that I do. And I'm going to fire off a bunch of hotkeys here. You don't have to worry about specifically what I'm doing, but just know that this, uh, that is the series of actions that I want to do. <laughs> you know, and now the hole is capped. So I go to system and I tell it to stop recording the macro just by selecting that again. Now Modo saves the last macro you recorded uh, in memory and it gives you a handy little facility right on the system menu to, to replay that macro. So as long as I give it the same starting position, I can just tell it to go you know, again, again, and again, 
it would save me tons of clicks and work. And I have it bound to a hotkey, so if I have these two holes, I'm just like, replay, replay, and I'm done. And I'm sure you can see how useful that can be in some situations. And, and to round this video out, we'll do one last little tip. Um, I'm not sure when this came into Moto, but I just noticed it uh, with this update. Uh, in your system preferences, uh, under the application section, uh, there's a slot here for specifying your default scene. And what that does you know, is it opens up a lot of possibilities. Uh, basically, all you do is start up a blank Moto file, uh, configure it up the way you want it configured up, you know, with shaders and render outputs and whatever else you want to have done within the scene, uh, save it out to an LXO file and point this at it. Uh, then every time you start up Moto, that'll be the default scene that appears. And every time you hit new, that's the default scene you get. So I'm going to use that actually to set up uh, my baking environment and my ideal rendering setup. But you, know, you can do whatever you feel is best with it. But it, it's a little option that I hadn't seen before and I just thought I'd mention it.